Hare Krishna Mataji, thank you so much for joining in and giving your valuable time. Please accept our humble obeisances on behalf of everybody who have joined and who are about to join and who will then join in later on, our, uh, on the recording. Mataji, we are reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 2, Chapter 9. Chapter 9 is titled Answers by Citing the Lord's Versions. And the text for today is text four. Um, yes, thank you so much, Mataji. Thank, thank you for giving me the opportunity to do the service. Dandavad Pranam to um to you too and to Mila Mataji who's here as well. Um so um I um I start so we we are going to do a bit of discussion around um um uh, Pabutum, uh Srimad Pabutum Canto two, uh, chapter nine and verse four. And I wouldn't have been able to do that at all without the mercy of my guru. Um, so um, my uh, I start with my prayers to him. Also, while um, looking into this verse and preparing for this verse, I came across some beautiful teachings by Bhakti Chari Maharaj and um, um, and uh, um, I forget the name. Uh, just give me a second, Mataji. Uh, uh, Kartik Chandra Prabhu um, and uh, um, and uh, Kartik Prabhu. So without um, so I I my obeisances to them as well, um, and hopefully um, I will be able to share uh, with you a, a little bit of the teachings that I was able to um, get uh, from them and also from my guru. Um, so, um, um, so I start praying to all of them and for their mercies. Um, so, um, uh, we'd start with the, uh, do, do you want me to do the Mangalacharan Mataji or would you like, uh, would you like to do the Mangalacharan? I can do it. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yes. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gnananjana Shalakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Ketanya Manobhishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam, Shri Gurum Vaishnavamstra, Shri Rupam Sagrajatam, Sahana Ragunatam Vitam, Tam Sajivam, Sadvetam Sadvetam, Kutana Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha Krishna Padanan, Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Vitamstra. He Krishna Karuna Sindhu, Dina Bandhu Jagadapati Purtisha, Gopika Kanta Vata Kanta Namostiti, Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vishapane, Sute Devi Pranamami Hariti Vanchikal Pataru Pyascha Kupa Sindhu Bhai Vacha Patitana Pavane Pyo Vishnavi Pyo Namam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Akita Sadadhara Shivasa Divaya Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Mataji over to you. Thank you Mataji. Um... Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Narayanam Namaskritya, Naram Chaiva Narutanam, Devim Sarasutim Yasim, Tato Jayam Adirai, Nashta Praisha Patreshu, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, Bhagavati Uttamas Shiloke, Bhakti Bhavati Nashtaki. 
आत्मतत्य विशुद्ध्यर्थम यता भगवान ऋतम भगवान ऋतम ब्रह्म ने दर्शयन रूपम ट्रांसलेशन ओ किंग The personality of Godhead being very much pleased with Lord Brahma because of his non-deceptive penance in Bhakti Yoga presented his eternal and transcendental form before Brahma and that is the objective goal for purifying the conditioned soul. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Atmatata is the science of both God and the living entity. Both the Supreme Lord and the living entity are known as Atma. The Supreme Lord is called Paramatma and the living entity is called Atma, the Brahma or the Jiva. Both the Paramatma and the Jiva Atma being transcendental to the material energy are called Atma. So Sukhdev Goswami explains this verse with the aim of purifying the truth of both the Paramatma and the Jivatma. Generally, people have many wrong conceptions about both of them. The wrong conception of the Jivatma is to identify the material body with the pure soul, and the wrong conception of Paramatma is to think him on an equal level with the living entity. But both misconceptions can be removed by one stroke of Bhakti Yoga, just as the sunlight, both the sun and the world and everything within the sunlight are properly seen, just as in the sunlight. In the darkness, one cannot see the sun, nor himself, nor the world. But in the sunlight, one can see the sun, himself and the world around him. Srila Shukdev Goswami Dev says that, both, that for purification of both wrong conceptions, the Lord presented his eternal form before Brahmaji, being fully satisfied by Brahma's non-deceptive vow of discharging Bhakti Yoga. Except for Bhakti Yoga, any method of realization of Atma Tattva or the science of Atma will prove deceptive in the long run. In the Bhakti in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that only by Bhakti Yoga one can know him perfectly and then one can enter into the science of God. Brahmaji undertook great penance in performing Bhakti Yoga and thus he was able to see the transcendental form of the Lord. His transcendental form is 1% spiritual and one can see him only by spiritualized vision after proper discharge of tapasya or penance in pure Bhakti Yoga. The form of the Lord manifested before Brahma is not one of the forms with which we have experience in the material world. Brahmaji did not perform such severe types of penance just to see a form of material production. Therefore, the question by Maharaj Parikshit about the form of the Lord is answered. The form of the Lord is Satchit Ananda, or eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. But the material form of the living being is neither eternal, nor full of knowledge, nor blissful. That is the distinction between the form of the Lord and that of the conditioned soul. The conditioned soul therefore can retain his form of eternal knowledge and bliss simply by seeing the Lord by means of Bhakti Yoga. The summary is that due to ignorance, the conditioned soul is encaged in the temporary varieties of material forms. But the Supreme Lord has no such temporary form like the conditioned souls. He is always possessed in an eternal form of knowledge and bliss. And that is the difference between the Lord and the living entity. One can understand this difference by the process of Bhakti Yoga. Brahma was then told by the Lord the gist of Srimad Bhagavatam in four original verses. Um, Thus, Srimad Bhagavatam is not a creation of mental speculators. The sound of Srimad Bhagavatam is transcendental and the resonance of Srimad Bhagavatam is, the, is as good as that of the Vedas. Thus, the topic of Srimad Bhagavatam is the science of both the Lord and the living entity. Regular reading or hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam is also performance of Bhakti Yoga and one can attain the highest perfection simply by the association of Srimad Bhagavatam. Both Sukhdev Goswami and Maharaj Parikshit attained perfection through the medium of Srimad Bhagavatam. 
Ama kıyanet veren diyesek yani cenaşıla kayacak şeyin bildim. Yine ateş meci güveyin ama. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari 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 Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Ram. Okay. So, now Canto 2 is the shortest of all the cantos, but it's also a very, very important canto. And in chapter 9, um, we have um, the Chattu Shlokas later, uh, which is considered to be um, the the essence uh, of uh, the Pagvatam, where you know the entire Pagvatam could be understood by those uh, four shlokas. Uh, uh, so um, in chapter nine, um, we see that um, the discussion is around um, the key question and the canter begins with, how did the jiva who is spiritual in nature attain a material body or you know how was that possible and not only that uh, how is it that the jiva which is spiritual in nature attaches oneself to the material body and thinks of oneself identifies oneself as the material body rather than the spirit soul now these are very thoughtful questions and in answer to that um um, it is said that jiva um, actually has no connection to the material world apart from uh, the medium of maya. So the only way that the spirit soul is connected to its material body is through maya. So um, we understand that um, there are different types of body uh, which is acquired and essentially because of this illusory nature of the Lord. And these varieties are essentially because of um, because the spirit soul is such ananda. However, um, the material body is made up of the gross body and the subtle body. But what is it that makes the jiva identify itself with that body? Now, in the last in the last few verses in chapter nine, we have seen um, how the jiva mistakenly the spirit soul. Um, uh, mistakenly identifies oneself with mama and aham, with mine and I. So what is it that makes it identify uh, itself with the body? Now think of oil and think of water. You cannot mix them. It is impossible to mix the two of them. They, are, they have completely different nature and no matter how much we try, we cannot mix oil and water. So why is it that the spirit soul, which is Satchit Ananda, like the, that of the Lord, as pure as Satchit Ananda, as the Lord, and very different in its identity, in its matter, to the material body, to the gross and the subtle body, what is it connected, what, how, what connects the two of them? And the answer is given, as we said in the earlier verses, that all living entities want to enjoy. And this desire to enjoy in the material world makes them identify with the material world because of the two primary thoughts. And what are those thoughts? Mama and Aham, mine and I. And these are the two things that keeps them attached to, these, to this material world. Now, how are these two words um, the cause of identification with the body? So, for example, think of, you know, and, and I talk a little bit about it because it leads us to the verse today. Now, how is it that aham and mama um, are the cause of identification with the body? Now, let's think about, you know, um, uh, you know, over here, we do pantomime shows during Christmas time. We do and we put on a costume and we play a role for a limited number, you know, maybe for an hour, an hour and a half. So that show goes on. And during that show, the actors, we put they put on uh, different clothes. Whilst they are putting, whilst even they're getting ready, wearing those clothes, if anybody asked them whose clothes are they, they would answer that this is my dress. 
this is my shirt and this is my dress. Now, after that, and so they immediately identify themselves with that particular cloth, piece of cloth that they are wearing during the time of, you know, that show. And it might be some a color um, of of dress that they like. It may be that they don't like it. But for that particular uh, time, they are wearing, they're meant to wear that, um, that dress or that shirt. And so they identify that to be their own and they identify themselves to be that character that they are playing in that pantomime. And so the moment we identify ourselves with that something, that is where the mind and the I, and I am the rightful owner and I am in control of this, that all comes into being. And the thought, the emotion with the mind, intelligence and ego, that thought that this is mine, um, I am in control, that thought which identifies itself with the mind, with the intelligence and ultimately with the false ego, cause the bondage in this material world. After that show is over and one takes the, 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 uh, the dress off or the shirt off, uh, if somebody goes and asks them, whose is this? Are they still going to say this is mine? They are not going to say that because then that goes back to wherever it came from. And that, that, that completely, you know, that completely shows us our life. So this material life of us, you know, as long as we are here, we've got unlimited so many number of lifetimes. Every single time we are born with a body, material body, and we immediately think that this is me, this is mine, this is my body, and I am in control. And the spirit self forgets that it's only a covering. As soon as that particular material body is left, the spirit soul does not identify itself with it at all. So, and that is that is the reason when we are in this uh, uh, illusory, when we are covered by illusion and Maya, that is what gives us that false identification of mine and ma and my of mama and aham. So you see this this illusory bondage, this uh, this Maya is what keeps us bound to this material world. And in, in uh, Bhagavad Gita 3.5, um, Krishna tells Arjuna that it is impossible that everyone is forced to act helplessly according to the qualities he has acquired from the modes of nature from the three modes of nature. What does Krishna mean by that? By, by saying that everyone is forced to act helplessly, what Krishna is saying is that the innate nature of the spirit soul is to act. The nature of the soul is to be always active, Prabhupada writes in the purport. The soul is always active. And the soul acts according to the material modes of nature that it has acquired through the lifetimes and lifetimes. And again, in conjunction with Maya. So without the spirit, spirit soul, we know that the material body cannot move. However, due to this false identification of the ego, mind, and intelligence that causes one to think of the material bodies to be in charge uh, of everything, uh, this is where the mind and the eye keep continuing to come over and over and over and takes control of a, of a jiva, of a person, of a personality. And that is what keeps them bound to the cycle, continuous cycle of birth and death. So we see that in reality, in reality, there is no question of the spirit and the matter mixing. They are like oil and water. But the eye and mind thinking of the jiva, who is under the control of maya, brings these two together. They bring the oil and the water together. They bring the material body and the spirit soul together. 
and gives them the false identification. So once, um, um, and we see we see the past time where you know I mean where Arjuna and I think I've mentioned this before where uh, Arjuna was very very um, uh, he was shattered after uh, his son Abhimanyu was killed in the Kurukshetra battle, and he was uncontrollable. Um, so Krishna um, he he called the soul of Abhimanyu to meet um, Arjuna and. Um, um, Abhimanyu could not uh, recognize Arjun because at the time Abhimanyu was the soul and the soul was uh, could not identify itself with the body of Abhimanyu whereas Arjuna was still identifying Abhimanyu with the body but the spirit soul of Abhimanyu which had already left the material body could not identify Arjuna and he was Arjuna when Arjuna said, I am your father uh, to that spirit soul. The spirit soul said, you know, who, which father from which life? So that is, that is the problem. So once in a school, Srila Prabhupada uh, was um, asked to uh, talk to children um, in a school. Uh, and he was told to ask in a simple language because they were children. And Prabhupada asked them uh, to, to all the children, who is the most intelligent of you all? And they all, you know, it's a, a few of them uh, put their hands up and Prabhupada called one, one, one of the boys up to the stage uh, and asked him, so what is this? And the boy asked, answered, this is my hand. What is this? My, my face, my leg, my, uh, my, my nose, my yes. And then Prabhupada asked, so if this is your hand, your leg, your face, your um, nose, where are you? Where are you? Um, and then the body card and the boy can answer. And this is one of the videos as well that is used in ISKCON quite a lot where people are asked randomly in the streets that, you know, um, can you point yourself to you? So is that you or is that you? pointing at the different parts of their body and they are asked to identify who they are. And then because, and we see how even the jivas, they identify themselves with their material body, but when asked with the critical question of who am I, they are unable to pinpoint that to themselves. And this is where the lack of understanding remains between the spirit of understanding of the soul and understanding of the body. The fact that, you know, by pointing at different parts of the body does not identify themselves as themselves, as the real I. And this is what uh, Maharaj Parikshit was asking um, Sukhdev Goswami to explain as well. So some very, very important question. And so we understand that the body is temporary, but similarly, this material nature is temporary. And it is only and only, as the purport is saying, only and only when the jivas are, understand this, uh, that is when the intelligent ones start preparing themselves for their permanent residence, ignoring this temporary residence of this material world. As we see, Prochit Maharaj did himself. He left this material world, gave everything um, within, you know, with no, didn't even think back of giving up his own uh, kingdom and everything, his family, everything. And he started preparing for his permanent residence. And that is what the intelligent people do. Um, but sometimes they're still, even the, the great sages, the great munis or the great souls, great devotees, Sometimes they are pulled back as well. And that, that is because Maya is so, so strong, like Parat Maharaj. He was, you know, he got attached. He had, you know, when he went, he left everything, King Parat. He left everything. He gave up his kingdom, gave, gave that to his, you know, um, son. And then he went to the banks of River Saraswati to meditate. He had reached almost the stage of perfection spiritual perfection he had almost reached that however just in the last minute he saw the deer he got attached to the deer and as a result when leaving his material body he thought of the deer 
and he was born as a deer. So the best thing to do, to, the best way to identify and detach oneself from this false identification of I and mine to the real identification of who am I and what is mine or is there anything mine? These are the questions one needs to understand. And the best way to understand this is through devotion. The best way to become detached is by recognizing which person, which personality does everything belong to that mind that we heard about in the previous verse, continuing into this verse, that mind um, is, uh, there's no such thing as mine. Everything belongs to Krishna. Every single thing. And that is the best way of getting, of becoming detached. Doesn't matter which varna we are in. We can be a Brahmana, a Kshatriya, a Vaishya, or a Shudra. Doesn't matter which ashram we are in. We can be uh, in a Brahmachari ashram, Gryasta ashram, Vanaprasta or Sanyas ashram. What we need to do is keep Krishna at the center of everything and offer everything to him. So there was this um, great devotee of um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu um, uh, called Shivananda Sen. And he used to take devotees from Bengal to um, Jagannath Puri every year. We are talking about Ratiyatra. So one day as they were traveling on foot, um, uh, they came across a dog who start, started to follow them. Uh, and so Shivananda Sen, he um, took, started taking care of it. Now, just a while ago, we were talking about uh, how Bharat Maharaj got very attached to the deer. And we are here talking about Shivananda Sen uh, getting attached to a dog and wanting to, um, you know, take, starting to take care of him. So every day, all the time, he would offer prasad to the food, to the dog. One day, he was doing something else and food wasn't offered to the dog. And he came to know about it quite late. And then he got a bit upset because the dog had left. The dog, the dog did not find food over there, did not find prasad. The, God, the dog had left. So Shivananda Sen was very, very upset. And this is a Vaishnava thought. A Vaishnava is very, very compassionate of every living entity. So when they arrived at Jagannath Puri, what did Shivananda Sen see? He saw that that dog was sitting in front of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu was feeding the dog coconut pulp. And the dog... Um, um, uh, you know, became a pure devotee, left its body and went back to Vaikuntha. So um, a Vaishnava is very, very compassionate. Now let's see over here two, two different examples of Parat Maharaj and of Shivananda Sen. So one was Parat Maharaj who got attached to the deer and we saw it see Shivananda Sen um, who, who was very compassionate to another living entity. And there is a difference. So compassion is giving something that one needs. Shivananda Mara, as Shivananda Sen was giving prasad to the dog. Attachment is feeling a deep tie to other things, to material things. So much so that you forget the true purpose of life, which is Krishna. Jivar Swarupai Krishna Nitya Das. So when when one becomes attached to something um, material, that is when the I and the mind comes, and that takes us away from Krishna service. But um, uh, compassion is a pure spiritual. Compassion takes us closer to Krishna. Attachment is pure material, takes us away. And we have to be very careful that we do not develop attachments simply based on our physical body. That is where the I and the my comes. And the jiva start thinking of themselves as the doer and the proprietor. This belongs to me. I can do this. I am in control. So our attachment should be based only on our spiritual identity. And our attachment should be to Krishna. That is the ultimate. 
And this is what Parikshit Maharaj is being told by Sukhdev Goswami by talking about Atma Tattva in this, in this verse. So Sukhdev Goswami was, uh, was telling Parikshit Maharaj that the conditioned souls had forgotten their spiritual identity that, and they are starting to identify themselves with their body. And the person who forgets their spiritual identity um, does actions which are, and does actions which are not supported by devotion, they become their worst enemies. And how is that so? because they're overtaken by the six cardinal passions. And what are they, as we know? Calm, crowd, lobe, mo, mad, mad, sarya. They're overtaken by this as soon as they become detached from the spiritual and become attached too much to the material. And they become, so performing bhakti, as we are being told in this verse, performing bhakti or performing devotion cleanses us of this contamination and what is this contamination we are over and over and over brought back to this contamination in various ways in various you know different sentences in the purport in the various lines in the shlokas we are brought back to this contamination what is this contamination so this contamination is the selfish mood of enjoying oneself only it's the very selfish mood of just enjoying myself, just one's own sense gratification, forgetting Krishna and even sometimes causing harm to other jivas, just because I and the mind become more important. And so jivas in this world, material world are possessed of this impure propensity of lording over the material nature and thinking of themselves to be in charge and in control of things. And so Sukhdev Goswami is telling Maharaj Parikshit that this is what the jivas should try to give up, this polluted and contaminated propensity. However, what we are also being told in this verse is that there is a big difference between theoretical understanding of all this knowledge. Yes, we understand we shouldn't attach ourselves to the material body. We are our spirit souls. It's all very fine, theoretically understanding oneself, uh, understanding this knowledge. But it's very difficult to come to actual realization. And how can we get this realized knowledge? We can receive this realized knowledge through proper practice. And that practice is nothing but sadhana bhakti, the science of atma tattva, as is being told in the verse, atma tattva, or in the purport. So the verse says that, you know, uh, vishuddhya artam, um, so vishuddhya means purification and artam means the goal. So, for the sake of purifying ourselves, one needs to understand Atma Tattva or the science of the soul or the science of self-realization, realizing that I am the spirit soul, I'm not the body. That is the core thing of everything. And Atma Tattva is the science of both God and the living entity. Why? Because, as the prophet says, because Atma is the God, Atma is the spirit soul, but Atma is also the super Atma, super soul. The Supreme Lord is the Paramatma. And the living being, the living entities, is the minuscule, the minute Jivatma, part and parcel of the spirit soul. So both are transcendental in nature, both are Satchit Ananda qualitatively exactly the same, but quantitatively, one is a drop of water, the other is the, the unending ocean, whereas, the, whereas Krishna is the unending ocean and we are just a drop of water. So Sukhdev Goswami in this verse it again um, stresses upon the point that it's the aim 
um, uh, it, it is very, very um, important for uh, Artemis or the spirit souls to understand uh, the, the difference between the Paramatma and the Jivatma. Understand that they are the Jivatma and the Supreme Soul is the Paramatma. And generally people have some very wrong conceptions about both of them. And it's a very, very wrong conception as we are being told to, to identify the Jivatma and the material body with a pure soul and uh, the conception of Paramatma. It's very wrong to equate the two of them and to think that Paramatma is at the same level as the Jivatma. So the Jivatma, as we say, as we know, they are minute, tiny souls. And Krishna is the Paramatma. And we are also told in this verse that with the Jivatmas, they are also, Jivas are also Brahma. And the super so and the Krishna is the supreme Brahma or Param Brahma. So these are things which people sometimes they tend to uh, equate. And we are being told very, very emphatically again, we are reminded over here that we cannot do that. We cannot compare the sun to, um, you know, just as um, a, a few analogies are given in this verse that, you know, it's the sun cannot be equated to the sun's rays. The sun's rays is a part of the sun, but it's the sun that provides the light. And the rays are just a part of that. There is a definite difference and it, it's also said that the sun, both the sun, um, uh, so it, when there is the light, when there is a, when the sun is shining, both the sun and everything in the world can be seen by the sun, by the sun's rays, by the light. In the darkness, one cannot see anything, but in the sun, one can see everything. So, just as in uh, it, when the sun comes out in the light, we can see everything around us. That is an enlightened soul. But in darkness, we are not able to see anything. So the Jivatma thinking of themselves, attaching themselves to the material body is the Jivatma's being in total darkness. So we are being encouraged to face towards the light, face towards um, the sun, the sunshine, the rays of the sun or the sunlight, because in the sun, when we are enlightened, when, when we, uh, we gather the knowledge of Atma Tattva, the science of the soul, that is when we, we not only see ourselves, but we see everything around us. Just as in the sunlight, we can see ourselves, but also everything around us. And then the another analogy is given um, saying that, you know, um, it's like the clouds as well. So again, if a sun shines, but if it's covered by clouds, it hides the light. So we should take away that cloud of wrong information, the cloud of Maya, the cloud of illusion from us, from our souls. Only then can the pure light be gained. Only then can we really, really understand the Atma or the signs, the Atma Tattva. So what is causing all this? We know Maya is causing all of this. But the Maya is also, you know, through Maya, if we, we see Maya, we we can't see if there is, um, uh, you know, if we if we have a back against the sun, what do we see in front of us? We see a shadow, and that shadow is nothing but the illusion. So we are not seeing the actual us, but we are seeing a perverted image of us. As as um, the chapter fifteen in Bhagavad Gita says, which, which gives an example of an inverted tree, where uh, we in this material world we see everything which is completely opposite to what is in the in the spiritual world. 
So similarly, you are saying, do not put your back against the sun. Don't put your back against, um, you know, reality or devotion or bhakti. And if you do that, all you're going to see is your shadow, which is completely the, in the control of Maya. And that gives you the wrong picture. So then towards the end of the verse, we say, so what is the solution? So the next part of the verse is, so what is the solution? The question is, can anyone be free from this I and mine? The jivas are, you know, birth after birth for innumerable number of lifetimes, um, identifying themselves in with this material bodies. The jivas have become conditioned in this illusory, you know, in this illusion. So is there any um, way out of this? And yes, we are being told Pakti, and not just Pakti, we are being given example of Lord Brahma in this verse. We have been given, we have been told that Lord Brahma perfected himself performing Pakti, performing devotion, and thus he was able to free himself from Maya. So, and now, you know, in the later verses, we'll see how uh, the conversation between Lord Brahma and Krishna is mentioned. Uh, but Brahma, he's the first Jiva. He's the first Jiva. And he is also known as Adi Kavi. So as we know, in the first part verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, um, Lord Brahma is glorified right at the beginning. In the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, it said, Tene Brahma Ride, Ya Adi Kavaya Muyanti Yatsuraya. So in the heart, it is he who first imparted. So Krishna imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Lord Brahma, who is the original living being, the first Jiva. Okay, so and the Lord gave this knowledge of Srimad Bhagavatam in four verses from his heart to the heart of Lord Brahma. And initiation of Lord Brahma happened. Now, Prabhupada said that initiation is a matter of heart. You need to connect with the heart of your guru. Uh, and it's not a fashion. That's what Prabhupada was very clear about. He said, don't, don't make initiation into a fashion that I am initiated by such and such, I'm initiated by so and so personality. Do not make it into a fashion because initiation is um, a, a matching, a bonding of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. Why? And we hear exactly, we hear the, how the Lord initiated Lord Brahma, uh, not by saying words, but in Lord Brahma's heart. That is how Lord Brahma was initiated by Krishna. And he received the Chatushloki or the four, four um, verses, which is just compact Srimad Bhagavatam. And that is what was expanded to become, uh, you know, Srimad Bhagavatam. So um, Lord Brahma was able to uh, perfect Bhakti Yoga or perfect uh, devotion. And that is the reason he was able to detach himself from the false identification of I and mine. Um, and he was given the, um, you know, uh, the ultimate knowledge by Krishna. So we see that the scientific knowledge um, uh, of the soul and the super soul um, is, can be given by a true sadhu, your guru, sadhu, um, Shastra. So that is where we have to be very careful that we are getting such knowledge from authentic and bona fide sources. It is not easy to study and find this knowledge. And Krishna, you know, uh, tells Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita, I am giving you all this knowledge. Um, and he, he was giving the knowledge for the benefit of mankind as well. Uh, and Arjuna says, um, it, you know, I can understand, but it's very difficult to understand, to practice it. And Krishna says that you have to practice and practice abhyas, abhyas. And that is what one has to do. Even that abhyas, that is a struggle. And this struggle is nothing but tapasya, tapa, 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 as Lord Brahma said. And at the end of this tapasya, 
one gets a degree and that degree, just like, you know, one passes, one has to study, study a lot. Unless one studies properly, they will not do well in examinations. They will not get their degree. And after getting, if someone, you know, passes a degree, they find the job that is their reward. So similarly, one has to do this tapasya. One has to go through the struggle of tapasya and then they get the degree. They get the degree of self-realization and that is when they get Krishna, they attain Krishna. And that is what Lord Brahma did as we are being told in this verse. So this study or the austerity undertaken is nothing but sadhana. And when one becomes fully qualified in their sadhana, one becomes a siddhi. So spiritual science also, as we are told, known as Atma Tattva, requires lots of austerities and one has to endeavor quite hard for it. And the endeavor is to understand Krishna without endeavoring. Without endeavoring, we cannot get Krishna. So as we see in the Damodar Leela, there has to be that endeavor and then that is matched by Krishna's mercy. Krishna's mercy is always ready. He is just waiting for us to do that literal, little bit of endeavor. So it has to be theoretical. So when we are talking about Atma Tattva, as being told in this verse, and being given the example of Lord Brahma in this verse, we have to understand that, yes, we get the knowledge, what is it? But it is also the practice as Lord Brahma practiced it. He, not, he did not sit with just the knowledge. He practiced it. And that is he he did his tapasya. He did his, um, his um, uh, you know, austerities. And when that happened, that is when Krishna was happy with him. And he gave the, the true knowledge to him. And one when one is completely adept, in the science of Atma Tattva, completely adept when one completely understands this, they understand the real identities of not just themselves, of every single jiva around them, and they understand their connection with the Lord. And that is what is the, you know, we are being told the same thing over and over. It's not the first time we are being told. Bhagavad Gita, there are five main topics in Bhagavad Gita. And the first thing we are told in Bhagavad Gita is that we are a spirit. We are not the material body. And the material body or matter is different. That's a different topic in Bhagavad Gita. So when we are being, we are being told over and over and over and over again. So this knowledge is coming to us over and over again through the Shastras. But we are being uh, urged not to keep it only as knowledge, but to practice it, just like Lord Brahma. So he undertook the great penance of performing, and he was able to see the transcendental form of the Lord. The Lord showed him his form. And in when the Lord showed him his form, he realized that the Lord is made up of not, not as, you know, as any other jivatma, as any other material body, but the Lord is of sat, chit and ananda. And that is what the realization is. So Maharaj Parikshit, when he asked all those questions in the last uh, chapter, one of the questions was, what is the form of the Lord? And by telling us, by giving us explanation that the form of the Lord is Sat Chit Ananda, Sukhdev Goswami is also answering the, one of the questions of Maharaj Parikshit. So, and he's also mentioning the fact, he's also making as a marriage parikshit, and through him, all of us understand that the material form of the living being, the jivas, the, the material body of the jivas, they are neither eternal, nor full of knowledge, nor blissful. They are not satchit ananda. So the only satchit ananda is the spirit soul, and that is completely different from the material body which are made of, you know, the 24 elements. 
And that is the distinction that we always and always have to remember. If we can remember that, then that conception, that whole conception of I and mine will automatically disappear. And we are being told, we are being given, uh, we are being left with a very, very positive message at the end of the verse that, you know, the conditioned soul, as soon as they can regain their eternal knowledge, as soon as they can regain this knowledge of Atma Tattva, they immediately can um, get self-realized and they can um, be connected to Krishna. And that is what we must uh, work towards. That is what we must endeavor. That is what where we have to do our austerities um, and our sacrifices. And the best way to do in this uh, age of Kali is nothing but chanting, chanting, chanting and chanting. As the Lord says, I mean, if there's anything greater than the Lord himself, it is the Lord's name. And that is what we have to do in this age of Kali. So we, I'm going, no, I'm going to stop talking now, but I'll conclude by saying a beautiful, beautiful um, um, uh, verse from uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, um, Madhya Leela uh, 22.31. Um, it's, in, it's in Bengali, and I'm going to pronounce it in the Bengali way. Uh, so it says, uh, Krishna Shuja Shama Maya Hai Andhakar Jaha Krishna Taha Nahi Mayar Adhikar, or it says, it means that Krishna is compared to the sunshine, as we were being given examples in our verse today as well. Krishna is compared to sunshine, and Maya is compared to darkness. Krishna, Shurja Shamo, Maya Andhakar, Maya is compared to darkness. Wherever there is sunshine, there cannot be darkness. So the verse says, Jaha Krishna, Taha Nahi Mayar Adhikar, or wherever there is sunshine, there cannot be darkness. As soon as one takes to Krishna consciousness, the darkness of illusion or the influence of the external energy that immediately vanishes. And that is what we are being told over and over in the Shastras and oh, again, once again in this verse. So uh, that is what we have to work towards uh, uh, as, as Jivatmas. So with that, I conclude my discussions. If I have made any mistakes, please do correct me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji. Thank you so much for today's session and taking us through the uh, oil and water analogy that uh, they both cannot be mixed and similarly and then going on to the differences between uh, jiva and uh, paramatma or um, krishna uh, in this case um, or the soul and super soul and um, uh, a few take-home uh, points would be that uh, uh, the material body, can, uh, the jiva can be tinged by material um, nature, but uh, Krishna cannot be tinged. Krishna is Satchitanam, while the jiva is uh, not Satchitanam. Uh, jiva is in darkness, while Krishna is the sun, compared to the sun. Um, uh, and the jiva can be covered by the clouds, and uh, Krishna cannot be covered, cannot have that avaran. And um, uh, Maya is causing all this on the jiva, uh, but um, Maya doesn't affect Krishna. Uh, so the various points like that, uh, uh, by bringing out, uh, I think it's a summary of all that we have learned so far. Uh, today's session was uh, uh, a very enlightening and we put everything together so, so well. Um, Mataji, one question, uh, just a practical uh, example, because now we know the philosophy, now we know what our constitution position is and what we should be aspiring. But uh, because we are just starting on this journey, um, uh, so this is mine. So is it uh, when we consider this is mine, so is it the material body that you are talking of or are you talking of the uh, things that we possess or the children that we possess or um, uh, if you can uh, break down this is mine uh, uh, that would be uh, 
in the form of examples that would clarify a few doubts. Yes, Mataji. So thank you. Um, so yes, the mind uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna mentions quite a bit. Uh, again, reiterates that in the 18th chapter as well. This um, this sense of proprietorship that this is mine. So I own everything. I own. So whether it's uh, my family, my house, my job, um, everything is mine. So anything that is in my life around me, with me, for me, um, everything that is mine. So I possess them. And because I possess them, I can control them. That, 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 um, uh, that sense that I am the Lord and I am in control because these are mine. Nobody else possesses them. So it can be my family, can be my job, can be material things, you know, my mobile or my pen, um, or it can be a, a situation that, you know, I'm in control of the situation. You know, leave it to me. I'm walking into a meeting. I am chairing this meeting, my meeting. OK, so you have to respect me because I am the chairperson of this meeting. So this attaching every person, thing, situation, circumstances to oneself. That is, you know, thinking of uh, that everything is mine belonging to me. And this mind concept, uh, uh, again, um, you know, it is, um, uh, you know, we have that in uh, in the lower species uh, where the animals, um, they, they have their food. Uh, and they want to don't want to give away their food. You know, if we see um, two dogs or two cats, if there's a little bit of food, one one of them is protecting their food. So that is mine. Whereas, you know, in the higher species, as we reach the human form, that concept of mind remains. But along with that concept of mind comes the doership. So not just a proprietorship that everything is mine, but additionally, in the human form, there is also the concept of doership, I, I will do it. So if this is my food, it's my food because I got it. I have done the action, I have done it. Forgetting the fact that yes, every single action ultimately has to be sanctioned by the super soul. Yes, we might have. So we know if the mind desires um, and if we have in our, in our karma bank, if we have enough um, karma, good karma or bad, whatever we have, if the karma allows us to do something, now Krishna is not going to force us to do something. Krishna never forces us to do right or wrong. But everything we know, if we, um, if we desire something, uh, if it is allowed by what is accrued in our karma bank, um, that is allowed. We can get that, and sometimes it, uh, you know, um, uh, we don't because um, the karma doesn't. Our karma uh, bank balance does not uh, allow that. However, the karma bank balance is secondary because ultimately, yes, it's required, it's needed, but ultimately the sanctioner is Krishna. We might have all that karmic balance, but unless and until something is sanctioned by Krishna, nothing happens. We can't even lift our hand. So this whole sense of I have done something. Yes, I have got that food because I'm able to. I have done that action. That concept is the wrong concept. It's a, it's a wrong concept that this is mine. Krishna, again, you know, we go back to the basics of Bhagavad Gita all the time. Krishna says, every single thing belongs to me. Living, non-living, every single thing belongs to me. Nothing is mine. And so we are encouraged, even in this verse, we are encouraged that, you know, put, do Krishna sansar, Krishna sansar karo chari anachar, as Naratam Das Thakur says. Do Krishna sansar chari anachar without doing wrong. Realize that Krishna is the doer. Krishna is the only proprietor. It is not me as the jivatma who is the my, who is, who is the mine or who is the I. There is that, there is the higher 
um, personality, the supreme personality of Godhead. To know if that makes sense, Mataji. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mataji. Yes, it is mine and then the doership. So, uh, <laughs> the shift. Shift. shift, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Mataji. Are there any other questions or comments? We have exhausted our time for today. Okay. If there are no questions or comments, can I request Pat Prabhu, Prabhu, Hare Krishna? Are you able to conclude the session for today, Prabhuji? Yes, uh, yes, yes, Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Our internet is some challenge, but it is okay now. I, can I audible, Mataji? Yes, 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 you are audible. Yeah. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, uh, Mataji, for your uh, clarification. And this is just to peg everything about the I and mine, which is a continuation is coming on. And uh, the main thing is that already Mataji already discussed about the right source. And the proper main thing, the right source and the right thing also. Main thing is that the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavatam and the right source so that we cross this one, this bondage of the I and mind, the misconception. Then we will go back to Godhead and we can get the proper knowledge. By that knowledge, we can cut this illusion like the misconception of the life. So most important is that Bhakti, including also the knowledge, proper knowledge. <clears throat> By this reading, this is where the scriptures, which is given by Prabhupada and other Acharyas, that is the basic principle, so cutting the knots of the illusion. Thank you very much, Mataji, for your nice class. Thank also, you. thanks all the devotees who are assembling here. I request everyone, please unmute yourself and chant Hare Krishna Mantra for glorification of Hare Krishna Mataji. Please join. Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna. 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 Hare